welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing a brew that came from Patreon subscriber Guy Fury. And this is a Tempo Stalker, Invisible Stalker deck based on Prof's Eidetic Memory. It's a one in a blue legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. You have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've drawn more than one card this turn, put X plus one counters on target creature control, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn minus one. Basically, you play this and move to combat. You get a plus one counter on a creature right away. If you cast Brainstorm, that's three additional counters. If you Ponder, that's a counter. If you tap the One Ring, you get however many counters that is. Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library does read, draw three cards, and then you put them back. So if you have Library in play, even if you're not keeping the extra cards, you are getting three counters from memory every time that happens. It's basically just kind of a massive combat boost to the cards that you'd probably want to play in a band control deck anyway. But it does incentivize you to play cards that you would not normally play in band control. And we've got four copies of Invisible Stalker, and then the honorary fifth copy in Silhana Ledgewalker. Invisible Stalker, one in a blue, hexproof, can't be blocked. Bang. Just whatever is going on with this card is happening. It's very hard to interact with. Silhana Ledgewalker, hexproof, and can only be blocked by flyers. This is much worse than unblockable, but it felt like a nice fifth copy of a card. I wanted one more. I thought about Geist of St. Draft, but playing a three drop into Days format, Wasteland format, seemed worse than sometimes Murktide blocks this. And basically from there, we just have a bunch of interaction. And this deck is kind of weird because it is a control deck in terms of it has Force of Will, Swords of Plowshares, One Ring Uro to Fairy. But it's a tempo deck in terms of we've got Wasteland, Free Permission, and Aggressive Threats. And I'm okay with it kind of being there. The list that Guy Fury originally sent me had like two Terminus in it and more One Rings. It had Jace the Mind Sculptor. It was trying to be more of a control deck. And it didn't have any Wastelands. It had Urza Sagas, actually. I'm fairly confident Urza Saga doesn't belong in this deck. But that's why there's still a Shadow Spear. I still think giving Invisible Stalker lifelink is kind of rules. But I kind of like the idea of being able to grind long with a row in the ring. Or if you do stick an early stalker, you got the wasteland and then you start putting counters on it and then you go. Maybe this deck is confused and won't work. Or maybe it's doing two cool things that happen to overlap in a way that is fun. We're about to find out. This is Guy Fury's Proft Stalker. 3 for 1 Trading is having a spring sale from April 10th to 15th. Their whole inventory is 5% off, and they offer free worldwide shipping on all orders over $500 or euros. Check out their vast selection of eternal staples, high-end foils, and sealed product. Use code SPRINGSALE24 to enjoy free, fully insured worldwide shipping and 5% off your order. Excluded from the sale is Outlaws of Thunder Junction, non-MTG sealed product, other sale items, and gaming supplies. Scan the QR code or find them at shop.341trading.com. I'm on the draw in round one. Kind of awkward having a four drop and a one lander. I, the one ring, I knew this would be awkward, but I'm hoping that the one ring shows up at times where it is mostly fine. Like, I hope it doesn't lock down our ability to play the game. I want it to show up when I'm already set up with other stuff and then get to go off, basically. I don't mind having this card in my hand. It looks like we're playing against Rescaminator. Oh, Oliphant. Fascinating. Is this Living End? What deck has Oliphant in it in Legacy? I feel like this has to be Living End. Who else would do this? But I did find land number two, which is actually land number three, like immediately. I can sort of plowshares that. No rush here to spend a Force of Will on something that I don't need a Force of Will. No rush on my Lurian Revealed either, because I have my land drop, and Lurian Revealed is a blue card for my Force of Will. Grab this basic planes and get a little Swords to Plowshares action. 
Is Rakdos scam a thing? Yeah, this can't be a living end if reanimates in here. So I guess it's just like Rakdos scam. Technically legal. Cycled another Olive Bunt. Let's go. Got another Badlands. What I don't want to see here is Fable the Mirror Breaker. That card's really annoying and good, and I would probably have to force it. Dang. All right. Well, they got me. I'm going to force Pitching Force. This deck looks fairer and scammier than it does look reanimatory. Let me get this Tropical Island that fills out my colors. I see the Wasteland. I hope I don't have to play this, but I might. Brainstorm. Okay, lands number three and four, but only kind of. If I put back Prismatic Ending and the One Ring, I can play a Stalker, and then we'll see if they Wasteland me or what's going on here. I can draw the ring, cycle Lorien revealed, play land number three, have land number four in my hand, and work towards the ring. Oh my goodness. Uh, this doesn't kill my creature. If they're just trying to put a 3-3 three, three double strike into play, the Swords of Plowshare is going to be a 3-for-1 all day. That's proof, baby. And they pitched a Molten Collapse to do that. Oh, saw in half. This is fun. Okay. Opponent, it came to party. All right, so... I can plow one of these things. The other one will do a bunch of damage to me. Saw in half. This rules. Rakdos Saw Scam. Perfectly normal game of Legacy happening here. Very importantly, though, they tapped their Wasteland to do that, which means I can slam the One Ring here without having to spend a turn revealing Lorien. They fetched. Is their last card to reanimate? Are you going to have three Furies? Oh, two Furies and an Oliphant. Okay. This is actually going to be really hard to come back from. But the One Ring is the type of thing that could make it happen if it's ever going to happen. All right, one ring draws the prismatic ending that I don't actually want, but I do have to get through it somehow. Get in for one here. We're racing now. They're at 12. They have 4, 8, 14, plus another 4. They have 18 power in play. That's a lot of power. I'm going to draw with the ring. This prismatic ending is very bad. I'm going to brainstorm it away. Teferi, and another Prismatic Ending. Okay, what does this actually look like? I can put back the Endings. I fetch to 16. Ring puts me to 14. They're attacking for 10. I plow whichever Fury they target with Oliphant. And then I can also play Swords to Plow shit. Or I can also play Sylvan Library. Okay. I'm going to fetch for Tundra. Play Library. Attack for one. I can actually do a ton of damage and maybe even win the race if I find a uh, prof's memory on this next turn. Okay, here we go. Hope I did the math right. They're going to target a Fury. I'm going to plow that Fury before it gets any bigger. This takes 12 damage off the board. They get in for 10. I'm at four after ring triggers. And then check this out. I'm going to stop in my draw step. Draw. Oh, if they have Orcish Bowmasters, I'm so dead. Uh, I'm going to tap one ring because Sylvan Library counts among cards. Oh, there's the memory. Okay, here we go. So I've drawn three, and it'll be four, five. Oh, this is, this is so fun. I would like to use this ability. I can put back any two cards that I drew this turn. I'm going to put back the two extra memories. And I've drawn five cards this turn. Yeah, I can just put a bunch of counters on Stalker, go to one, and then win next turn. Okay, I'm going to play Memory, draw a card, play Teferi, bounce the creature with Trample. The creature doesn't have to attack, we just have to go to combat. I have an 8-8 Hexproof now. That next turn will be way the heck bigger. And, all right, pass the turn. Hope they don't kill me. I'm dead to anything that deals one damage here. But we did find a line. I win next turn if they don't win now. And they just pass the turn. I got to fairy here. I go to one. I draw my first card for the turn. Tap the one ring. Draw four more cards. Sylvan Library draws two more cards. Put back Plow and Wasteland. Okay, so I've drawn five. That's already lethal. If I play Ponder and Uro, that's more. Maybe I shouldn't reveal that I'm an Uro deck. 
A plus to fairy. Cast ponder. That's another one. One, two, three. I'll keep them. Play a fresh one ring. Just in case I have messed up somehow. Keep this protection from stuff. Wasteland. Move to combat. This should be 14. If I understand how cards work. Oh, 15. Even better. Well, that was a fun start. Okay, opponent's on a brew as well. I like this. We've got Rakdos Scam with Saw in half. Prismatic Ending didn't seem like it was good at all. Hydro Blast and Veil of Summer both look good. I assume um, Surgical Extraction will be good. Oh, we did see actual reanimate. I know Surgical Extraction's good. Lavinia can stop stuff like Fury from getting scammed out. I could entertain Spell Pierce as a card, but I already have to make some cuts here. I cut three and bringing in five. Uro seems excellent. Shadow Spear actually seems great. Two. Maybe not with the Shadow Spear, though. Like, if we get into a race... Like, if I have a Stalker that's getting counters... Yeah, Shadow Spear would help me win a race if Stalker's getting counters. But if Stalker's getting counters, then I'm largely doing what I want to be doing. Okay, I'm not going to have Shadow Spear in the deck. I have Uro to gain life if I need that. Force of Will seems reasonable. Prof's Memory was the thing that flips it, flipped the whole matchup for us. Teferi's good. I'm not really going to be wastelanding this opponent, but also I need my lands in my deck. Maybe I'll shave a Force of Will and try to play to the board. I didn't see anything like crazy over the top that's worth two cards, really. I saw a bunch of ways to get creatures into play. Too many of them, even. Yuck. No lands at all. Even after leaving my Wastelands in, I will keep this one. I think I have to bottom. It's either a Stalker or a Tundra. In Force of Will, I don't really want to Force of Will my opponent. Oh, they mulled a five. Okay, I'm actually going to bottom the Tundra and keep Force Blue card accessible. Because if they're on low resources like this, they might try to swing for the fences like a Turn one, Dark Ritual, Scam Fury, Saw it in Half kind of thing. And then if I force the Saw, they're down a million cards. Let's see what happens. They're on five. They've got Grief. Bummer. Okay, well, whatever happens here happens. It would be messed up if they reanimated my Invisible Stalker and then put a bunch of stats on it. If I have to go, that's a good way to do it. Okay, they did strip the Force of Will. Reanimate. We're back. They're down to one card, but they do have Grief in play. And they left me with Veil when they didn't have to do that. They must be more worried about winning the race at this point than further disrupting me. If they attack for three. I'm pretty worried about Bowmaster here. Reanimate my Stalker. Hell yeah. Okay, uh, Stalker comes back. I'm actually going to cast Veil of Summer just to cycle. That just gets a new card. All right. Let the Stalker race happen. Uh, they have two unblockable creatures. I have one unblockable creature. Stalkers can't block each other. This isn't like Shadow. Just straight up unblockable. A big beats. Sylvan Library. Probably too slow for that one. I'm going to Brainstorm. That's not pretty. I'm going to put back Sylvan Library and Caracas. And then cycle Lorien Revealed and get a fresh look with Ponder. I need a white removal spell. Or a lifelink ability. Ooh, Teferi's pretty good, though. Interesting. Wasteland, Teferi, Veil of Summer. Okay. I go to 8. Teferi bounces Grief. And then I have Veil to protect me from getting Griefed again on the way back through. And I gotta deal with Stalker. And they have reanimated, so the life totals are weirdly close considering I've attacked for 2 this game, and they've attacked for 12. Okay, they sent it back. Land first. Teferi. Get this Grief out of here. The Stalker can kill Teferi, but that's an attack that's not going at my face. All right, we've reached something resembling stability. Now we got to pull ahead somehow. Uro would do it. Prof's Memory would start the, the return. Ooh, hard cast the Grief. Smart. That's a good way to get right back in this game. Kind of wish I had wastelanded them now. But then I wouldn't be able to Veil. No, this is fine. The plow's really good. And they are attacking Teferi. Come on, Prof's Memory. No love. Plow the Grief. Wasteland you. Play a second Stalker. And now, top of the deck. Gotta deliver. I am 
Okay, uh, they're on a seven turn clock. I'm on an eight turn clock. I am actually winning the race right now. Yeah, they attack me to seven, then they go to 12, six, 10, five, eight, four, six, three, four, two, two, one. Dead. Yeah. I am ahead by one turn. Is any card to break it open, please? Uro, Prof's Memory. Any of these things would be great. We're just poking back and forth. Oh no, they have a spell. This is going to flip the race very quickly. Now I really, really need action. Come on, Prof's Memory. Sylvan Library, you asshole. That's way too late to the party. I would have liked that last turn. Well, it is three looks at a one ring starting next turn at two life. With the Caracas, I can do some Uro tricks where I gain three life and then bounce it before Voidwalker eats it. That could actually change the race. Though Uro is a reasonable draw. One ring is great. I'm at two. We got three looks here. Ponder. And multiple Uros. Okay. Top, top. And then Uro. Play this big guy. Gain three life. Probably should have put the Ponder on top here. So I could cast that now instead of drawing a second Uro. Just already spewing off. Pick up Uro. I'm at five. I got a one from this next attack and then see a bunch of new cards. Yeah, Ponder would have been so much better here. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Oh no, they have an effect. Don't stop in my instep. I can't deal with anything. Oh, it's just a troll. Okay. Troll's fine. Maybe they'll reanimate it and die. Found a basic swamp. Thoughtseize takes a row. Well, now I'm glad I have two. It is in the void if they want to cast it, but then it goes to my graveyard and they lose their void walker. This deck could just put lightning bolt in it. Back to one. This is where I won the last game. One life. Clutch mode. There's that ponder. Show me the goods. Another Uro. Okay. So the second Uro doesn't help. We determine that. And put back Misty Rainforest. One, two, three, Uro. I'm at four. Fetch. One, two, three, Uro. Or no, the top of my deck is Misty Rainforest right now. So I should ponder. If I Uro first. No, I'm going to ponder. All right, here we go. Ponder. Bunch of junk that is not going to help me. Shuffle this. Flooded Strand also doesn't help me. Green, blue, colorless. Come on, Swords to Plowshares. Draw a card, gain three life. Still on a ledge walker. No! All right. We've lost this game. That was fun. The Dothy Voidwalkers are in now after I cut all my prismatic endings. Knowing they have Void Walker, I think I'm going to switch one Uro for one ending. Just one more answer to the thing that also happens to shut down Uro. Yeah, I'm going in. I get to be on the play this time. Okay, keep any hand with Veil vale of Summer versus Scam. I'm in. Yeah, this is just a nice Bant control hand. Stable, got a bunch of lands. I could play on basics if I'm inclined to. Force, removal spell, the best counterplay for their deck in Veil vale of Summer. They've multi five again. I'm going to play the Misty in case I want to fetch basic forest. A mountain. Just going to go to my turn. Now I got a force. And I get to keep my Teferi. My modern player brain was like, oh no, Ragavan. Not legal in this format, luckily. Uh oh. Did we pivot onto a Blood Moon? What is this ancient tomb? Where did this come from? Are we red Stompy now? They certainly have the Brewer's advantage right now. They're griefing me. Well, I'll do the thing. Basic Forest and Veil of Summer. Pitched a dark ritual to that grief. And that goes to the graveyard. Broadside Bombardiers. Cool. I can just plow these jerks. Then play Teferi on my turn. I'm just going to play on basics because I can. Why risk whatever might happen here? Another Force of Will. Teferi and I'm going to plus. I think I'd rather answer their next permanent than draw a card right now. Okay, they're stuck. Now I need to apply pressure. Now I'm going to draw with Teferi because my mana's up and I would like to do something this turn. Brainstorm. I already found a fetch land. That makes this better. Cool. All right. That was basically the perfect spread. And Uro's in my deck for green, green, blue, blue. My next land cast Force of Will if I fetch a blue source. Yeah, I'm going to get Trop here. And tapping out a Veil of Summer to represent Swords of Plowshares, but that is what I have. I'm not going to bluff one thing when I actually do have a different thing. 
Uh-oh. They found land number four and black mana all of a sudden. Lightning Bolt confirmed member of the deck. Come on, Prof's memory. Are you bail summer? Begin the slow bleed from 20. They're at 19. Three cards in hand. Wasteland, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to attack with Invisible Stalker. And I could start leaving up Hardcast Force, or I could waste them off black. I think Hardcast Force is just cracked here. And me not wasting them should pretty clearly telegraph what I have. Because they have both raw output of mana in Ancient Tomb and a color I can screw them off of in Badlands, and I'm still holding up the Wasteland instead. Okay, I'm going to Wasteland now. Should have played my land first. Small Bleed. Orcish Bowmaster. Hate that guy. I'm going to Swords to Plowshares that. If I had played my land first, I could have just forced it. Shameful stuff. Plow the Bowmaster. They are winning the race now, if I don't find another threat. These Stalkers are pretty anemic if you're not pumping them. Fable. I don't want to play against this card. They've been screwed this long. That gets them out of it in every possible way. Fixes their mana, fixes their hand. I just need to find a memory, and I'm I'm racing. Bonder, please, find the memories. Another Stalker and a Library. I mean, Library is really good. I could take Library, or I could just shuffle this. I think I'm going to take the library. Start seeing more cards more often. And now with library in play, if I find a memory, my stalker's just 4-4 four, four immediately. Or 3-3 three, three immediately. No! Stop doing this! I'm not ready for this thing. This race just became troublesome. Come on, deck. Hook it up. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, please. Oh, they did fling the token for the two. They're trying to get it done. We know these first two cards. Oh no. That's bad. I can't afford to pay any life here. Hold up Veil and Force to at least make sure the next wave doesn't happen. Take two. I know my top two cards are lands. I need a good one underneath them. Or, uh, I know my top two cards are blanks. Okay, uh, put Savannah and Stalker on top. And I think I just have to double block here. I hate this, but it's where we are. That also taps me out of force. But I can't just keep taking these beats. If they have a second Bombardier, they just win right now. They're in combat. They're thinking about it. They they realize what I'm trying to do, and they're deciding if they'd rather clear the Stalkers at the cost of their threat, or wait until they have a follow-up. Okay, here we go. Double block. Is there a follow-up? Please don't. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a relief. Get to untap and see another new card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put back Savannah. Or I'm going to put Savannah. I want the Stalker eventually. I'm going to put back Savannah and Stalker and then play Ponder. I want to move these cards around and see if I can get something big. Uh, these are not the cards I want. I'm going to shuffle. That's a big one. Okay, here we go. I could hold up Force. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And if there's a land anywhere in my top cards. Yeah, I think I should wait a turn on Uro. Good shuffle. Okay, and they're just passing the turn. Just need a land that makes blue or green in this Sylvan Library somewhere. Impossible. Okay. Now what's the sequence? I could Teferi, minus Teferi, play Memory. Top, top. A Teferi, minus Teferi, play Memory. Draw Stalker. Now I have all fresh cards and I have Force Blue card plus Veil. Might have been better to Stalker first and then Memory for the extra plus one next turn. I don't think that's where this is going to hinge, though. I think seeing three fresh cards is worth it. Uh-oh. Black Mana unlocked. Whatever they've been holding back is suddenly available to them. Animate Dead on Broadside Bombardiers is the play. This is a 1-2 if it comes into play. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Uh, this is too dangerous. I'm going to force pitching the Stalker. Go to five and let Uro try to win this game. All right, Sylvan Library. Any blue or green land. Brainstorm, brainstorm to fairy. Can't catch a break around here. I'll put back to fairy and brainstorm. Plus this to fairy. Cast Uro. At least go up to 8 life, get that little bubble. 
I'm going to brainstorm, see if I can find a, a threat. Nope. All right. I did find a land that shuffles away all these bricks, though. I'll take that. That casts Uro next turn. They're on notice. Prof's memory, simply just whiffing on putting four counters on something because I didn't have a creature. That's okay, though. We're in bank control mode. Grief. Pitching Thoughtseize. We're back in business. Oh, I was supposed to fetch. Whoops. And Teferi's not too bad, but I was supposed to fetch that away. And now I can brainstorm with a fetch up, though. That's not the worst. I'm just going to fetch. I was definitely supposed to fetch before that Veil resolve, though. The Stalker. Okay, here we go. It's all coming together. Put back Ponder and Wasteland. Then I'm going to escape Uro immediately. Green, blue. Green, blue. Here's Uro. I go up to 10. I draw Wasteland, put it into play. Take out their Black Source. Then I can play Stalker and put three counters on it. You can even brainstorm and make it more than three. I don't think I need to do that, though. I can do that as a surprise next turn. Memory on the Stalker. And now I'm way ahead. At 10 life, pretty comfortable. I'm not worried about a broadside bombardiers. They would have to, like, draw a Black Source, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, reanimate broadside bombardiers, and Grief attack me, which I can just block. I feel pretty safe. They'd have to reveal a part of their deck I haven't seen yet, like some Grizzle Brand or Archon of Cruelty that goes way over the top. I don't even think I'm worried about that, though. I granimate Grizzle Brand here, use Died Invisible Stalker, Archon of Cruelty, I sack the Uro, bounce Archon with Teferi, blast you with Stalker. Yeah, undefeated lifetime with this deck so far. Let's go. That was a fun, really cool, interesting match between two kind of off-meta decks. On to the next round. Win your spot in the World Series of Poker main event in Las Vegas. Club GG is providing 100 exclusive packages between April 1st and June 30th for those who want to test their skills against the best. Each package includes the $10,000 main event entry fee plus $2,000 for travel. Use code BOSCH for a free 7-day premium membership that includes entry to these satellite tournaments. I'm on the draw in round 2. I am going to keep this hand. It needs some spells, but memory is a cantrip, right? Wasteland. Either vial. Okay. Now I have all my basics lined up with this Flooded Strand. I wonder if this is actually Merfolk, or if this is like some Esper Vile thing. Oh, they didn't have a second land. I'm going to go Forest and Island here. And play Memory. Extremely interested in a Prismatic Ending for this Aether Vile if they kept a one-lander. As I draw. Exclusively lands. I know I kept a hand with a lot of lands, but I've drawn three cards this game and they were all lands. Oh, we're... Actual goblins? Like, not the Stompy version? The this <laughs> It's funny that this was uh, lower on my radar than Merfolk, when regular actual goblins is a much more respectable deck. But I haven't seen Vile Goblins in a long time. Oh, we might not just be Vile Goblins. There could be more going on here. This smells like a ringleader to me. Yep, there it is. Four Snow Blue card. Revealed Sting Scourger and three lands that go to the bottom. Okay. Um, hey, deck, how about some action? <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. I can at least wasteland their Ancient Tomb and make them play only on either Vile. But still, like, what the shit. Would have liked to do something by now. Battle Cry Goblin. Yeah, I'm just going to lose to this nonsense. Without any spells. Vile's at three. Another Vile. Oh my god. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, there are 20 lands in my entire deck. And here they all are. I'm going to play out Savannah, see if I can get this Wasteland on the hook. Not like I need lands here. And they actually do have a 3-drop. Probably a Matron for another Ringleader, or a Sling Gang Lieutenant, or some shit that just kills me. Name Sticker Goblin. Okay. That one also just kills me. All right. Yeah, you win. I draw my lands. Uh, yeah, okay. Engineered Explosives comes in. And my main deck is mostly set up for this already. I just didn't know what it was and also ran like shit. I like Engineered Explosives and Hydro Blast. Versus Goblin, Silhana Ledgewalker is functionally Invisible Stalker. They're the same card. Probably Teferi and one of 
the Force of Wills. Because they are a cavern deck, and also I don't want to two-for-one myself too many times here. Like this. Let's try to draw some white cards this game. Okay, uh, there's no white cards, but this hand at least has Sylvan Library in it, and does stuff. Uh, I could have cast Shadow Spear here, but I am holding on to it to figure out if I need to play around Wasteland or not. The Ring, okay. I'm going to go Forest Island here. Oh, they're fetching in response. There's some Red Stifle I need to know about. Okay. Oh, they're just playing around my Stifles. Shot in Port. Settling in here for our grind. I'm pretty happy to Wasteland Rashad and Port while I'm just getting ton of selection with Sylvan Library. I'm going to put back Savannah, and I'll pay four to keep Force of Will. And I can Wasteland the Rashad and Port and play Shadow Spear. Goblin Lackey. That will get plowed. Library put... Uh, okay, so I could keep these cards because they're all pretty good. Top. I could keep Plow. Yeah, I'm going to keep the plow, and I'm going to get planes and just plow the lackey right now. And I'm also going to invest in memory. Let's get it down. Make it happen. As soon as I find a creature, I want it to be a 7-7. Seven, seven. I have taken a lot of damage from Sylvan Library, which means the One Ring's a bit of a risk, but I'm hoping Shadow Spear recuperates that. Goblin Matron. There it is. Grabbing a name sticker goblin. Flooded Strand. Invisible Stalker, let's go. Alright, Flooded Strand on top. I could ponder into the Stalker, then it would be bigger. I could pay four to keep the ponder. And then I have force backup. I go to five, which makes the one ring kind of a huge liability, but no, I'm in for it. Okay, I'm gonna play Stalker here. Leaving up Plow and Force. Stalker's gonna be a 3-3 three, three right away. It can pick up Shadow Spear next turn. Then we'll see what's what. I finally revealed to my opponent what my deck actually does. Got a 3-3. I'm not going to equip Shadow Spear because then I'm tapping out of the plow, and I would like two levels of interaction up just to make sure I don't get completely clowned here. Cavern of Souls. On the slow roll. Glad I have two layers of interaction up. Oh, can't counter this. I can plow it, though. And then it doesn't make any mana, because that's how that card's templated. Aether Vile. I think we're past where I need to worry about that. I think my top card's a land, if I remember right. I'm going to shuffle that away. Grab a Tundra. Sylvan Library. Uro. Let's go. Another Force. Prismatic Ending. This is all good stuff. If I put back the Force and the Ending, I can Uro into Ending. Do I even need Ending? Do I care? I could Uro into Equip Shadow Spear and have Force in my hand. I'm going to do that. Hey, Savannah... A row. Stalker will get plus three, plus three, plus the Shadow Spear, so I'm gaining seven and attacking for seven here. Here we go. In for seven. If they cast an uncounterable Muxus off of an Ancient Tomb, I could still lose here, but I think I've done what I can. They would need Muxus plus Ancient Tomb for that to be the line. Even if they name sticker up into Muxus, I can counter one of them, because they only have one cavern. They have four men in the pool. Ringleader. Can't counter that. They've got a Goblin, War Chief, and three Bricks. This one feels over to me. Because now I can one ring, draw extra cards, have protection for a turn. They're dead in two hits, and I have one ring protection in between the two. They would need to find an answer to Invisible Stalker. Put back top, top. Then one ring. Draw my card. It's the land. I can ponder. That's another one. Shuffle that ponder. Swords of Plowshare is really good. Grab a Tundra. I was going to Prismatic Ending the Vile, but I think I'm more interested in leaving a Plow at this point. 11-11 lifelink. In we go. The full engine online. We did it. Okay. Now they know what I'm up to. If they have any Edicts, they do have Black Mana in their deck. Or at least... Have we seen a Badlands? Uh, I've already forgotten. I know they tapped Cavern for black, but it was for a red creature. Warren Weirding hasn't really been seen in Goblin decks in many years. Whatever. If they could kill my creature, they could kill my creature. This is the deck I have to present. Ooh, this is a little risky. I don't like the Caracas One Lander versus the Wasteland deck. I do like White Source Plow versus the Goblin Lackey deck, though. I am going to keep this. 
if they have turn one lackey, turn two wasteland, and I don't draw land in my first two draw steps, I could be in trouble. But all those things have to happen. I like being ready for lackey. Okay, here we go. They have demanded the first set of things. Please don't have the wasteland. Even Rashad and Fort's fine, because I can cycle Lorien in response to the tap. Okay, not a wasteland. Battlecry Goblin cannot be countered. Wasn't going to counter it anyway, scoreboard. A Lorien revealed. I'm going to get basic island. I know I'm missing green here, but that's a later problem. I can't afford to just die to wasteland. I found Uro and Flooded Strand here. That gives me some extra life, some ramp, and my third color. They're just in for two. Grizzly Bear Beats and Skirk Prospector. That could start unlocking some stuff. Yeah, I think I want to just get Uro in here. Drop Uro. Oh, Wasteland. That's really good. They're already hurting for mana, and I wasn't going to do anything with this plane, so if I could take them off and make them fumble around while I add to the board, that would be great. What if Foothills? They could have four mana here if they sack their whole board. They can attack for five if they don't sack their whole board, which does not even trigger the boy. Now I've got options. I could engineer explosives for two. Just hold that up. I could Teferi bounce the Battlecry Goblin. Lose Teferi, but they do have to replay that. I'm playing Teferi. Teferi's whole instant speed and like being in play as a Planeswalker thing doesn't really matter in this matchup. Oh wow, the nuts. Just keep it coming. Yeah, control, baby. Now I get to keep Teferi, unless they draw Ancient 2. Cavern of Souls. They did have three mana last turn through the Skirk Prospector and didn't do anything big with it. Warchief, okay. This is going to be the end of Teferi. Oh no, they, they agree that Teferi is not that important. Okay, that is what I said, and my opponent came to the same conclusion. Hey, I'm going to play Tropical Island. Uh... This is actually really sad and funny. Um, if I engineer explosives, to fairy dies, but I also take out their war chief, which does represent mana and damage right now. Yeah, I'll just do that and then Uro next turn. Green, blue, white. Plus to fairy for good measure. Goodbye to fairy. I love you. And I have to do that now. I can't wait to see if they like cast a name sticker goblin and I get both. Because if they get to their main phase, they could just cast ringleader. Then I'm in the garbage. Okay, they do have a mountain, and they have three cards in hand. We know one of them's Battlecry Goblin. I can Uro plus Stalker next turn, or Uro plus... Or no, I can't do those things because I have too many white sources. I can Uro, and then if I draw a blue source in the top two cards of my deck, I can do another thing. That's a good white card, though. Green, green, blue, blue. My deck doesn't use its graveyard at all. I'm just clicking random shit. Uro, trigger... Forest, okay. No blue mana, but the Source of Plowshare is pretty cool. Caracas can even pick up Uro if that becomes important. Against Mono Red, I can't imagine that being important, but I do have the ability. Sting Scourger. Powerful stuff. Oh, I should have plowed the Battlecry Goblin in response to this. Then the Sting Scourger couldn't have got haste. And I can still clear that, but this is three damage I didn't need to take. That was that was a bleed. Okay. So blue green colorless. I can refire Uro immediately here. That's good news. Fetch Savannah. Does that matter? Savannah, Tundra. It doesn't matter. I think Tundra is actually better. And I'm fetching in response to the trigger so they never have priority to surgical, if that's a thing they have. And we're back in. Another Uro in hand. Force blue card. Versus the cavern. Not ideal. But now they either tap out or lose their sting scourger. Uncounterable goblin. Matron. Okay, let's see. Whatever their best card is, they can go get it here. What do you got? Muxus. They got big plans here. Aether Vial. Okay, here we go. Swords of Plowshares, always happy to see that. Prof's Memory. Might as well put a plus one counter on Uro. It's here. I'll take it. I could have played the Invisible Stalker pre-combat, I guess, and just had that get bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. I can cast the rest of my hand here. One ring. And here is that stalkery boy. Still a force backup and plow up. They could violin a Skirk Prospector and then sack their board to have an uncounterable Muxus. That is a counterspell proof way to do that. 
another matron. Are we going to see the name sticker now and fill in the blanks? We did see the name sticker to fill in the blanks. Matron is attacking into my protection from everything. No blocks. You can't fool me. And I will take the extra card in the end step. Bonus one ring. A brainstorm. Heck yeah. It's going to be so much damage. Wasteland. Happy to see that. Take out the Cavern of Souls. And I can still brainstorm here if I want to. Does that matter? I am going to brainstorm. I can attack with Uro and get a shuffle still. And if I find a Shadow Spear, that would be sick. Okay, I'm going to put back the extra one ring and the brainstorm. Then I'm going to cast Lorien Revealed. Now I'm just popping off. Oh, I need more blue than that. Hold on. How did I tap these lands? Blue, blue, one, two. Okay, here we go. Figured it out. Prismatic ending the Aether Vial. I want to know what's coming out of that before it happens. Cross memory, gigantic invisible stalker, straight to 9-9. Nine, nine. I'm going to attack and plow before blocks, and that should be GG. Exaxes? We got the GGs in the chat. That was a lot of fun, and we remain undefeated with this deck. Let's go! This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw for round three. I'm going to keep this hand. This is the most aggressive hand I've had yet, and I might just lose. This is Legacy, but I'm going to try this thing. Oh, we're playing against a Doomsday. No other deck would do that. I'm going to play Flooded Strand and pass here. The temptation to Wasteland them is there, but if they resolve a Doomsday, make a pile, and then count wrong on the lands because I had surprised them with a Wasteland, that's pretty exciting, actually. And I am not going to play around Wasteland at all. Edge of Autumn is just such a specific card that I don't think I have to worry about this. An invisible Stalker on the stack. Damage coming. I'd feel better with a Force of Will, but this is what I got for now. Orcish Bowmaster. Haha, <laughs> got him. Cannot be touched. Well, this is some sort of hybrid. Something or other. Doomsday doesn't play Orcish Bowmaster. No deck except Doomsday plays Edge of Autumn. Something's going on here. Oh no, <laughs> I've been punked. Is this Doomsday Scam? Is that a thing? Have I been hoodwinked? Okay. Uh, I'm going to play Memory, even though it triggers Bowmaster. I would like to draw a card and get this race going, if I can. Force of Will pitching Predict. Predict is also a Doomsday card. Okay, yeah, this is some sort of Scam Doomsday hybrid. Personal Tutor. Okay, here we go. Oh, they Personal Tutor for Ponder. What a cursed life that is. Okay. I'm going to Lorien Revealed for another Tundra, and then play the other memory. Let's race, come on. Got another Force for this? Yeah, you do. Force Pitching Stifle. Wow, Stifle's in the deck too? Yikes. Okay. In for damage. And here comes the Ponder that they tutored for. That's tough. Don't think that because that's tough, I feel bad for them. They are, I think, ahead right now. Forcing two Prof's memories, though, is pretty exciting. They did not shuffle the first ponder, did shuffle the second one. And they would have to have days in their hand or some spell pierce adjacent card to counter to fairy right now. The fairy is not my play though. I'm going to plow bowmaster and then play another stalker. And then to fairy can bounce the orc army next turn and then I'm totally stable. I'm not going to trade off with orc army. I refuse. Invisible stalker too good. All right, to fairy are you going to take over this game, or are we going to look at each other longer? We're in. Bounce the Orc army. They're tapping mana. But I have to parry and play. Okay, cool. That was definitely a, uh, whoops. Yep. So, we're playing against Doomsday Scam, whatever that is. Spell Pierce, Veil of Summer. Do I need Surgical Extraction as well? 
Lavinia might even be reasonable. Carpet of Flowers actually looks really good against the scam half of the deck. Engineer Explosives might even work. Yeah, this is a nice little squeeze because I want Force of Will versus Doomsday, but I don't want it versus anything else they're doing. I'm going to board out my forces. I'm going to lean all the way in that direction. And if they get me, they get me. Prismatic Endings, I can play fewer of those. So Veils, Pierces, Lavinia. There's room for one carpet right now. All right, I'm going to cut another ending for another carpet, and I'm going to try to play the game like this. Let's go. If they just Dark Ritual Doomsday, I'm so dead. But I don't know what deck they're going to be on, and I'm more worried about the other deck than I am about Doomsday. I'll keep this. Burden Catacombs. Lotus Petal. Uh-oh. Are we just sending it? Oh, yeah, we're sending it. Oh, I basically have to draw Spell Pierce here. Oh, Brainstorm. Interesting. This is Brainstorm, then gonna cycle a troll with Lotus Petal, reanimate troll with the other Lotus Petal. This is a very interesting play because you could have Lotus Petal to cast Brainstorm. Then you still have your fetch up. Huh. All right. I'm not sure what just happened, but I'm kind of grateful for it. Oh, maybe they're just representing Bowmaster. Whatever. If you're going to Bowmaster me, it's going to cost you two Lotus Petals. I'm going in. I will take a plow here and there's a ponder under it. And then there's another memory, but I got one of those already and it is a legend. Another Brainstorm. Fetching. They do have Doomsday mana. Oh, not with that, they don't. Yeah, Undercity Sewers. Puts a Daze in the graveyard. That's good, because I'm going to jam a spell this turn. I'm going Ledge Walker. Bang! Legacy Staple. Silhano Ledge Walker. This card was, like, fine in its standard format, and also really good in Pauper for a while. This is not the first time this has been seen in decks, but... I haven't seen it in Legacy, that's for sure. Shieldred. I'm ready for you. Kinda. As ready as I can be. I'll send a plow first, see if they have the force for this. They do. Okay. Teferi can answer her. Oh. Or I can just draw Caracas. Like a boss. Boing. Plans that were totally lined up the entire time include this. Oh, we got GG's already. Okay, yeah, they don't want to play through that. I don't have that much of a clock. I, I guess they don't. Uh, they just don't want to deal with it. Uh, but if they do play through and get the children back down, that could be a problem for my deck. But I guess I'm casting Teferi next turn. And all right, yeah. That was a timely Caracas. On to the next round. Still undefeated. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in-store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing magic. I'm on the draw in round four, and never met a handful of lands and brainstorms I didn't like. Wasteland. This is the third opponent of the league who has led on Wasteland on turn one. It's just very interesting to me. I imagine they're going to cycle a troll with this, but I'll just pass and see what happens. There it goes. Fetching an underground sea. I think I'm going to brainstorm right now before they can bowmaster it or daze it. And I can cycle Lorien in the upkeep if I want different cards, which I do. Put back Tundra and Wasteland. Yeah, I might just draw the cards now that I have a Stalker to play. Stalker versus Troll, the classic race legacy matchup. Reanimate is happening. Troll's in. Bonus at 14. I'm going to draw this Wasteland because I would like to deploy Stalker if I can get away with it. I'm going to fetch basic planes to cast Stalker. Let's see if they have any respect for this thing. We're in. Okay, they attack me down to 12. If I resolve memory, I'm attacking them to 12 also. If I brainstorm two, that's even more. Cycled another troll for another C. There's the C. I go to 12, as predicted, and the race is on. Ooh, the race is not on anymore. I'm just going to plow this troll. I think this is the way to go. A new avenue has presented itself. 
Drown in the lock. My locks! Uh, I could brainstorm here and try to fight over this. Or I could play memory and try to race. I don't think I'm winning the race. I do have other removal spells in the deck. Okay, I'm not going to brainstorm here. I will give my deck one more turn to deliver playable magic cards. Have a little faith here. Oh, days. Got me. Okay. Yeah, Drown in the Lock was a good one. I could have Wastelanded first to play around that. That's not a card that's consciously on my radar out of Legacy decks, though. Maybe it should be. I've seen it here and there, but it's not in the stock list. They're griefing me. This is definitely going to take the Brainstorm. And then I just got to rip another Plow off the tippity top or a Teferi. All right, deck. Plow or Teferi, please. Opponents animating a troll. Okay. Uh, now it doesn't matter. I have no outs here. Yeah, certainly not that. Okay. Fail to play around Drown in the Lock. At least I know now. Uh, the Surgical Extraction coming in. Carpet Veil. This is definitely Scam. And the Animate Deads make me think it is Rescaminator. Rather than just Blue Black Scam. Which is also a Legacy deck. Frustratingly enough. I'm going to cut all my Force of Wills. I think the spell pierces and veils and surgical. Just have to do that work. You can't afford to two for one. I like Shadow Spear. Prismatic Ending is like medium. It doesn't hit grief or troll. It is good against Bowmaster and the uh, Void Walker. But there's a Soul Guide Lantern here too. I probably want that. Okay. Uh this is seven out, eight in at the moment. I don't think I can ever afford to cut a memory because Invisible Stalker is so anemic without this, and then you win so fast once you hit it. Maybe I'm going to shave a Spell Pierce, or could shave one of the Graveyard pieces. Okay, I'm going to keep the Spell Pierces and lose the Soul Guide Lantern. Okay, I will keep my hand. I think I have to cast Ponder here. Like, the play I'd be worried about Spell Piercing it would be Grief Reanimate Grief, but then they just take the Spell Pierce off the, the first Grief. I'm going to ponder and make sure I don't just die to a wasteland. They mulled a six. Cool. I'm not going to die to wasteland, and I do have a source of plowshares here. And they do have the grief. That's why this deck is so good. I even had a one mana piece of interaction here, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't beat the front half of grief, and then the back half of grief is free to go. Took my ledge walker. Okay, they're stripping threats instead of interaction. Which means when I draw my plow here, I can defend it with Spell Pierce, and that's pretty good. I am going to shuffle away this third land. I don't want that. I guess I didn't have to make this decision yet. Whoops. They plow the grief. That's gone. They've seen the One Ring. They are incentivized to control my mana if they can. Upkeep Bowmaster. Yep. This thing's going to be tough. Uro. All right, well... If I'm going to send anything into a Bowmaster, it's going to be a row. Put Wasteland into play. I could Waste to try to control what they can play. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Wasteland doesn't cast a row. It does cast one ring. But I think if I can just escape a row, I'll be fine against this Bowmaster. Under City Sewers. Dump to Troll. And do they just have raw reanimate from hand? Yeah, they do. Gross. Okay. Yeah, under City Sewers, it's good when it provides minor selection, and it's insane when it just is in Tomb. All right, well, got to plow the troll. At least I drew a plow both times they reanimated a creature. Cycle so another troll. Basic Swamp. They know they can't reanimate here. They've seen the spell pierce. Come on, land that casts Uro. Boo. I mean, that card's really good once I find the land that casts Uro. But I am under pressure here. I feel very silly for Wastelanding at this point. They've just hit their next two land drops, no problem, and I'm not casting the one ring because I don't have four mana. It's just dumb. Come on, deck. A, a green, green, blue, blue. Already hyper exposed to Wasteland. I'm going to double up, triple up on green. Days could be the last card in their hand. That would set me back a bit. If it's a second Bowmaster, I take some damage, but at least I have the biggest thing on the board. Okay, we're in there. Okay, Petty Theft, sure. That is annoying. Yeah, now Uro has to go back through the front and back again to, to be relevant. That might be enough. Cycled another troll. They want land number five. There it is. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
I can play one ring here. I know it's going to resolve. If I cast Uro, I take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm still alive if I play Uro. Yeah, I actually think I'm supposed to Uro here. I go to 11. I take nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, the fetch fetch will. Oh, the fetch fetch actually puts me to zero. And I need those. Probably both of them. If I one ring this turn, I stay at eight, but I draw down to seven. Uro puts me back to 10. They attack for five, six, ping me for one, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'm dead next turn also. I think I'm supposed to Uro. I'm going to go with that. Because this one gives me a chance of putting a creature into play to pick up this uh, Shadow Spear before I'm dead, where if I play the one ring, then the Uro is not where it needs to be for that to be a thing. I'm going to go to two. Yeah, the two fetch lands is just too rough. I go to two, one ring, I can fetch. I would need one ring to draw an untapped mana source so I could brainstorm into the Bowmaster. They did a really good job this game fighting over my threats so I could never fight back. Okay, I mean, this does let me play the game a little bit. One ring. If they have Force of Will, they win. If they have Daze, they win too. Wow, yeah. Look at that. Uh, yep. Um, that is the difference between me being able to brainstorm here and not. Okay, I will draw a card. It's a fairy, huh? What do you do? Nothing good. Uh, I can fetch and brainstorm. Oh, no, I can't because I'll die in my upkeep. All right, well, nope, this one's over. Yeah, that answer to Uro, uh, I, I went in as hard as I could on Uro. It felt like the right plan. It felt like the only plan, and their last card in hand did answer it in an effective way. They brainstormed, they fetched, they got their Undercity Sewers, and they kept their card on top. Enemy dead, the troll. Let's just pile it on. Put me in the trash. I understand. Maybe I wasn't supposed to tap the ring. I was just supposed to brainstorm instead. I end up at one either way, but I see more cards. All right. Uh, if I play Teferi, bounce Bowmaster, draw Plow, hit Troll, still super dead. All right. Yep. GG. Just a little too much pressure. On to the final round. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, Four foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. I'm on the play in the final round versus James Casau, who has guested on this channel before and is a friend of the show, usually playing Grixis. I'm going to mulligan this No Lander. I will keep this hand with Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath in it. I'm going to bottom Force of Will. Force of Will is just not a card you usually want versus Grixis Control. Volcanic Island. Dragon's Reach Channeler. We've been betrayed. This is either some low to the ground build of Grixis or James has sold out everything he believes in. Hey, okay, Prof's Memory. Just curving out here. Okay. Swords of Plowshares. Strong card versus Dragon's Rage Channeler. I do need white mana, though, to play this game. And if he is over there playing Grixis Delver, Wasteland is live. I hope both for my sake and for James's that this is a low to the ground, like card selection version of Grixis Control. I'm not set up for days in Wasteland. I did not keep my hand with that in mind. Milled a card, then shuffled Ponder, firing Brainstorm again, and milled a creature. This is going to get Delirium. But I like seeing Bowmaster go to the graveyard. I gotta be honest. All right, come on, White Source off the top. Don't make me dig for it. Bummer. All right, brainstorm. Yuck. All right, put back memory and I think Shadow Spear is a long way from useful right now. Ponder. Let's get a Shufflerino. Okay. Found a white source. I could use this white source now, or I could wasteland my opponent. I'm not going to play wasteland against a potential Delver deck. 
I am going to fetch, though, before Stifle is live, just in case that's a thing that's going on over there. Wasteland has appeared. Hate that for me. Plow your creature. Oh, the creature died. Take that as a positive. And no follow-up. That could mean Orcish Bowmaster, or could mean nothing. I'm going to waste the Underground Sea. That's the one that casts Orcish Bowmaster. I want to at least know about it, if that's what's happening. I'm going to move to combat, and I am going to brainstorm now while I still can. At least force the action on that. Oh, I could force of will this also, if I'm so inclined. Interesting. Force of will would have to pitch to fairy. I have made my land drop this turn. I think I'm going to bury this Uro and Swords of Plowshares, and I am going to try to fire a Force of Will pitching to Fairy on this Bowmaster. All right, Force back pitching Murktide. All right, Murktide Regent was one of the cards I was worried about. I'm glad it's gone. And now I need to fade Wasteland for a little while. Even if there is another Murktide, I can plow it and play Stalker next turn. A Caracas and Invisible Stalker. Let's go. The beats are are present. Bolting my dome. I would really like Orcish Bowmaster to be out of play, but I really can't beat a Murktide Regent if I plowed this thing right now. I'm going to have to take the bash from Bowmaster, and then we'll see what happens next turn. Played Volcanic Island. Down to two cards over there. Ooh, doesn't want to offer the trade of Bowmaster. We are prioritizing different things right now, and I like it. Smells like a Murktide. Okay, I can play around days, so I will. Ugh. I hate what a uh, slave I am to playing around days, but I do just lose there instead of being, like, pseudo-stable. And because he's not attacking, I'm not attacking either. Like, I would, I'm not going to block, but if leaving this back saves me a life point, I'm in for it. Okay. He's on team. Keep my Bowmaster forever. Delver. Yuck. Still one card over there. Still likely that it's Daze. Uro. Let's see what's going on. Was that card Daze? And are you going to Daze my Uro? Trop comes into play. Bowmaster deals one to me. My Stalker becomes 2-2. Two, two. Now Bowmaster really can't attack. And Delver has to flip to get in. I got to get Uro in or answer the Bowmaster is what I need to do here. Delver flipped Revealing Lightning Bolt. That's bad. Can I keep taking damage from this orc army? Three, four, five. If I don't block this, I'm just dead to lightning bolt next turn. I'm dead to lightning bolt anyway. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What if I draw the land for Uro? Oh, if I'm at four and I draw the land for Uro and Uro puts me to seven, then Bowmaster puts me to six, I die. If I block orc army, I go to six. I play Uro, I go up to nine. Bowmaster pings me to 8, and I'm still at 2. All right, I have to block. Sucks. And, oh, I drew Shadow Spear. Did I know that was there? Because that would have actually flipped the game. Uh, wait, would it? I would have been at 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No, not even close, actually. <laughs> I lied. All right. All right, whatever, James. Coming out here with Grixis Delver. Who invited the cop? Hydroblast comes in. Carpet of Flowers comes in. Veil of Summer is good enough. Spell Pierce. And we've seen the sideboard plan a few times before because this has been a popular selection. Prismatic Ending staying in against this deck. It's not like Scam where we need to guess where we have to beat a 4-drop, a 6-drop, whatever. It's 1s and 2s out of this deck. And then Murktide Region at the top. I'm going to cut a Ledge Walker because this deck is just full of flying. Uro and Stalker are how I'm going to win, if I'm going to win. Library is really dangerous versus... Bowmaster and versus Delver in general. I don't mind getting card selection every turn, but I basically can never pay for. Do I think that Spell Pierce is better than that, though? Maybe. All right, let's try it. Engineered Explosives and Soul Guide Lantern also have arguments to be made. Oh, God. I think I shave a memory, get Soul Guide Lantern in, and, and Teferi is one of my answers to Murktide. I could shave Lorien Revealed now that I have uh, carpets in. I could play one Veil, add explosives. I'll do that. Because they're not, like, griefing me. It, the Veil is for counter spells or Orcish Bowmaster only. I'll keep this hand. It's got a bunch of removal and can play on basic planes if it needs to. Pass the turn. 
Dragon's Rage Channeler. Bobble. Bobbling me. I would love to draw just a fetch land here that gets a basic. That would be great. Nice. Okay. Oh, I can Wasteland to play around days. And then Prismatic ending this creature off basic planes. If it just hits a bunch of land drops here, that's going to suck. But this is a three-color deck that would keep one landers if it needed to. Underground Sea, Ponder. Chose not to shuffle. It's not going to miss land drops. I'm going to fetch. Oh, uh, this is annoying. Um, I could get all basics here with Lorien revealed. Hey, I could just float Engineered Explosives on one in play and make opponent play around that. I could send Invisible Stalker. Yeah, I'm just going to get my basic and accept that I don't have green mana right now. You want to daze my Stalker and go to zero permanence versus two permanence. Deal. A land just sends to Fairy, if I'm interested in doing that. He swords to Plowshares. I'm going to cycle for Trop. Play my Tropical Island and get in for one. Damage has been dealt in combat. First blood. First involuntary blood. Brainstorm. And fetching in the upkeep. Didn't want that one anymore. Not a wasteland. Praise be. I got lots of plows here. I can just send them. Won't even miss them. That's gone. Invisible stalker. Get in there. Something's happening. We're getting edicted. Bowmaster. All right. That doesn't really do anything. This smells like he's got multiple bowmasters. That's my read on this. I'm going to plow this one that I can see. God, I love swords to plowshares, by the way. He did think he could block. He said in the chat, he said, I thought it was Geist of St. Traft rules. Nope. Was considered for the deck, but uh, Invisible Stalker, fully untouchable. Not just hexproof, also unblockable. Fetching lane number four, that's terrifying. What's going on over there? Murktide. I'm ready for this guy. Okay, uh, I could play around days if I wait a turn. I could just plow this. Representing Pyroblast, like tapped black black. Could have represented Bowmaster here and just didn't. How bad is it for me to take five? Not that bad. All right, I'm going to cycle for another tropical island. My white source is just stable. Plow the Murktide. I would have rather bounced that with Teferi, but that's unreliable, both because of Daze and Pyroblast right now. Orc Army, getting the beats in. They are winning the race, but not for long. Okay, uh, time for Teferi to test these waters. I strongly suspect Pyroblast. Yep, there it is. Mishra's Bobble, that was clearly just drawn, or it would have happened already. This would be a great turn to draw Veil of Summer. If I can draw, if I can resolve my Prof's Memory... Go nuts. All right, Flooded Strand. They've seen that one. All right, Prof's Memory. Show me the Pyroblast. Brainstorm. Uh-oh, emergency meeting. Live in fear. This is actually a pretty messed up engine. It's fragile, especially versus Pyroblast decks. Uh, it plays right into Bowmaster pretty hard, but also, like, this will win the game if Memory gets going on Invisible Stalker. We've seen it multiple times. Worth a Force of Will. I agree with that assessment. Unfortunately, I'm not ready to expose this for zero to take this 1-1 out of play. I got 14 life to work with. Lightning Bolt. Yeah, just sending it. This feels like another Murktide. Okay, drawing for turn. Didn't get Murktided. Oh, another one. I am still a turn behind on the race. But this does make it very interesting. And I can expose this for zero just at my leisure to make myself the only person with a non-land permanent in play. All right. This is risky because Bowmaster might be involved. We dodged. I'm going to draw this Ponder. I'm going to Ponder now. I'll take one of these Brainstorms. Then I'm going to Shuffle for a Tundra. Cast the Brainstorm. If he Bowmasters me here, he'll be such a master. Price of Progress. Uh, that puts me to two. All right. That's really good. Uh, all right, yeah, I was worried about Bowmaster, but instead I got nined out of nowhere. Okay, a positive record, though, with this brew around Invisible Stalker, a old card, but not a legacy card at all, and Prof's Eidetic Memory, a newish card. Invisible Stalker was 
basically unbeatable in its limited format and was part of a standard archetype that was really good. Hexproof and Unblockable is deeply messed up when they are on the same card, and we did see that bear out. We did also see bear out that a 1-1 is not very good in Legacy. The games where I could back up the Stalker with even a couple of counters ended very quickly, but there were also lots of games where a Stalker got in for like 5 or 6 and then I just died because I wasn't supporting it at all. Maybe this wants to be a Stoneforge Mystic deck with more things that Invisible Stalker can hold. Maybe you just have to max out on Prof's Memories, just play 4 even if it's a Legend and whatever, you, you take what you can get because of it, how it is. I think Stoneforge Mystic is probably where I would want to go with this if I was going to keep working on it. The actual equipments in Legacy have fallen off in the last few years because of removal's just too good, like the sort of Fire and Ice and that sort of thing. The equipments that get played now are just Batter Skull and Cauldra. But Invisible Stalker with Prof's Memory might be enough incentive to put some actual honest equipment back into a deck. This was fun. Guy Fury, thank you for sharing it with us. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.